Have you ever thought about starting your own podcast? When I was trying to get this podcast off the ground, I had a lot of questions. How do I record an episode? How do I get my show into all the apps people like to listen? How do I make money from my podcast? Well, the answer to every one of these questions is really simple. Anchor. Anchor is a one-stop shop for recording, hosting, and distributing your podcast. Best of all, it's 100% free and ridiculously easy to use. And now, Anchor can match you with great sponsors who want to advertise on your podcast. That means you can get paid to podcast right away. In fact, that's what I'm doing right now by reading this ad. When I started using anchor to do my podcast, it was so extremely easy that I haven't even bothered to look for another app to use. I love this app. It's the only one I deal with, the only one I even recommend, period. I recommend you get on there ASAP. If you want to start a podcast, this is definitely the place to go. It's easy. You can drive around and record. You can sit in your basement and record. You can uh, can do it anywhere. It's fantastic. So if you've always wanted to start a podcast, make money doing it, go to anchor.fm slash start, anchor.fm slash start to join me and the diverse community of podcasters already using Anchor. That's anchor.fm slash start. I can't wait to hear your podcast. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Really Rich Podcast. Thank you so much for being a part of this. In case you have not figured this out yet, I am Adam Rich, founder and host of the Really Rich Podcast. If this is your first time hearing me, just know two things. A, today is my birthday. Not like it matters, not like it's important, but it is part of the story. Why leave it out? And also... Just know this, my main goal with every single podcast is to try and help people find a better mindset in their life. And it's not just, I'm not some mindset coach. I don't mean to say it like that. All I'm trying to do is I'm trying to help people navigate the crazy, psychotic, evil, destructive, negative culture that we are in in these day in this day and age. Like there's so much reason for people to be worried and panicked and negative and sad and depressed and angry and just... It's unbelievable what is going on in the world today, but I do want to try to help everyone, no matter the age, no matter where you come from, no matter what country you live in, where, what kind of a upbringing you had, I just want to help people be happy. And it's not just, hey guys, just focus on this and you'll be happy kind of thing. It's, I'm really honestly trying to share, for lack of a better word, wisdom. And it's not, and I don't say that like some guy on my high horse thinking I'm wiser than all. I don't mean that at all. What I'm saying is, is there are things that some people in life already know. And there are some things in life that people really struggle to understand because of the perspective they have, because of the upbringing they've had, because of the, the setting in which they grew up, the, the teachings that, they came, that they've had, the mentors that have taught them the way that they think. Maybe you come from a broken home. Maybe you come from a poor schooling. Maybe you come from just not being very educated or very wise in general. And I just want to help people be happier. I just want to help people gain knowledge that can lead them to freedom and happiness in their life. Because listen, at the end of the day, when we walk through life thinking that we're a victim of some kind, that somebody wronged us, the government, my neighbor, my friends, my family, whatever, when you walk through life thinking that you're a victim of any kind, no matter how small or large, it's the wrong way to live your life. Listen, everyone gets screwed. Everyone gets, you know, bad things will happen. But acting like you should use that as an excuse for why you don't try to do better for la- I'm sorry guys, but it's just, it's a lazy, pathetic, broken way to live life. And I don't want to say, you know, pathetic's probably too strong of a word. And here's why I say that. Cause not everyone can help it. Some people do- d- had a horrible childhood and upbringing to the point where they don't know any better. They don't see better things. And so I, I take it back. I don't mean pathetic. What I do mean is it's awful to think of that is the only way you should live your life or think of it as practical or to think of that as, you know, I know so many people that are pessimists, negative, because they're like, well, I'm just real. I'm just a realist. And it's good to be a realist. It's good to understand what is reality. However, sometimes you are surprised by things you never thought could happen, which should allow for some hope, for some optimism. 
And not everyone is geared like that. And the way I look at it is, I have had a great, you know, I give a thousand percent credit to God and my family, my parents especially, because of the way that I was raised, because I don't look at myself as a victim. No matter how many times I get screwed over by whether it's friends, coworkers, my bosses, uh, the government, uh, whoever you want to call, whoever you think is out to get you, just know that no matter what they do will not dictate what your worth is, what you're capable of. The, the, you have a power within you, no matter how many times somebody may have told you that you're not good enough, smart enough, pretty enough, whatever. It's a, that's a person's opinion. They don't matter. Their opinion doesn't. The person matters, of course. Their opinion means absolutely nothing. I could not begin to tell you how many times I have made posts on any social media, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok especially. I get eaten alive out there with negative comments along with everybody that post, that puts out videos or any kind of content. Listen, when you put yourself into the public spotlight, no matter how small it is, if you got 12 followers or a million followers or a billion followers, whenever you are any type of a public figure, and you put down a comment of any kind, a post of any kind, a video of any kind, it is, it is necessary that there is going to be criticism with that. And especially if you are doing something that challenges the negative perspective, and I mean it like this. If you put out something that, you, that, is very, that has always been helpful for you, or something that is positive, something that is happy, something that makes you feel better, or makes you... I don't know, enthusiastic in any way. When you run that exact same information by somebody that is not enthusiastic, is not positive, it is somebody who is not happy, they're always going to look for a reason to knock down what you have just built. Why? Not because they hate you, but because they're negative or miserable and they hate to see other people thriving. A lot of people, and this isn't everyone, but a lot of people are so much happier when they're miserable and they get to see other people be miserable with them. I could not tell you how many times I have walked into work with a good attitude. I've tried to walk in with a great attitude, positive, and then within minutes, somebody comes up to me and just complains and cries and whines about the same old nonsense I have heard for week after week, month after month, year after effing year. You know, and when you hear the same negative crap over and over and over, you it's so hard to be enthusiastically happy and positive around just stuff like that all the time. And it's it's hard because sometimes the most negative people around you are your best friends or your wife or husband or your mom or dad or your brother or sister, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your, your dog, whoever it is, <laughs> obviously not your dog, but even them. What if they're just miserable all the time? What if your dog was just sad? Every time you went home, you just couldn't wait to see your dog and your dog was just like, yeah, whatever, man, whatever. You know, it's, it's hard to be enthusiastic or happy or positive or joyful when you're around such negativity constantly. And here's the thing. Sometimes the most negative people in our lives are the people we love the most. And that's very difficult to escape, to get away from, because you don't want to lose the person. But the reality is sometimes you have to, you got to limit your time around that. You have got, it's not that you have to cut them out forever. It's not that you have to say, look, you're a negative person. We're done here. We're done forever. But love them from a distance. Love them in small doses. I have a friend, I'm not going to say his name because I love this guy to death. I love him like a brother. I hope nothing bad ever happens to him. But I can't be around him very much. I can't because every time I'm around him for too long, it is either frustrating, annoying. It, it, it'll drive anger depending on the conversation and not at the person. It's not that I'm frustrated or annoyed at the person. It's just you get annoyed at the complaining. You get annoyed at the presence that they bring into your life, the energy that they bring to you. And you got to just limit this. And, and the wild thing is, is we, we're living in a society now where you can't even say certain things without... You, you, a lot of people can't feel, don't feel like they can be their true self on social media. Maybe in person, but if anything that you say 
that isn't, you know, agreed upon by the powers that be over Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and TikTok, if you don't say exactly what they want to hear or what they or, or the message that they're trying to push, you're not even allowed to speak anymore. And I can't wait till we get to a place where there are so many options for social media that the bad ones weed themselves out. And because here's what's happening right now with Facebook, for instance. Facebook right now is basically dying. I, and as a matter of fact, I've said this for over a year. They're in way worse shape now than they were a year ago back when I said that they're almost out the door. And the reason is because there's no more trust. People don't trust Facebook. And then recently, the 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 power, I don't know if it was Zuckerberg himself that said that, but basically the, the, the person in charge of the business plan or the model that Facebook is going after essentially said something along the line. I know I'm going to butcher the exact language, but they basically said that the, their new target for people that they're, that they're going after to try to target to gain people to Facebook is preteens. Now, if that doesn't creep you out, I don't know what will. Because the fact that you, have an, that you have adults running one of the largest tech companies on the planet saying that they're actively going to start targeting underage people, boys and girls, that's a scary thought. You have people in power openly admitting that, you know what we're going to do? We're going to go after the underage kids. And these are the same people that have lost the trust of the adults. So the scary thing to me about this is that the people that you know you can't trust, the people that have lost all trust from the public, that is a dying company, says, you know what? Here's somebody who still trusts us, underage kids. That's the people we want to go after. We want to indoctrinate them early so that way when they get older, they'll already trust us. You know, one of the oldest business strategies in the world is to go after the younger generation with your advertising and your marketing. Not necessarily to try to reach out to them and call them and talk to them, but to you, you, you model your advertisement towards them. And here's why you do that. Here's why this makes sense from a business standpoint as far as advertising goes. Because what happens is when kids are sitting at home, they don't have, they don't have cars. They can't go out and drive around. A lot of kids nowadays are constantly just sitting in front of a screen, whether it's the TV, their phone, whatever, computer. And so here's what will happen. They're sitting there and all they can do is watch stuff, right? Because most kids don't go out and, and play outside anymore, sadly. So what happens is you get these kids sitting in front of screens all the time. That's all they do is they see information on TV. Well, here's how you do this. You gear things after kids and that way they grow up with you. They grow up with this almost not not necessarily a trust but they're familiar with you like think about mcdonald's with the happy meals when you were a kid you always wanted to go to mcdonald's because they give you happy meals you got a toy with it so you always wanted to go to mcdonald's you always wanted to go to the place with the cool toys and a lot of times mcdonald's got the better toys than, than the other fast food companies they got the better big name brands disney would be involved you'd get marvel i remember getting like marvel or dc toys i remember pokemon came around then you had the monopoly stuff you know you'd go there and you would try to get all the different things and you'd win the little prizes from monopoly it gave you a fun reason to want to go and here's what happens when you're a kid and you spend all that time going to mcdonald's over and over and over you have eventually get to the point where that's so normal, so comfortable, so regular that McDonald's could basically tell you that they're putting poison in their food and you're just so addicted to it. You're so hooked on it that if unless you're seeing dramatically negative effects around you, it's very hard to be con like convinced that all of a sudden you shouldn't go to McDonald's when it's been your whole life. When I was a kid, listen, I love McDonald's right now. This is not me trying to bash on McDonald's because I love McDonald's, unfortunately. But when I was a kid, my parents always took me there when we didn't have, you know, regular food at the house or whatever. When they were like, where are we going to go? My favorite was McDonald's. They had the cool toy. I want to get a Happy Meal. I wanted to get the cool toy. Then it, my, we would leave church on Sundays and my grandma always drove me home. She would always drive me to McDonald's. That was my favorite place. I always went to McDonald's. Now I'm 38 years old and I love McDonald's. I don't want to eat there all the time. I rare, I don't eat there nearly as much now as I used to. But the point is I still love it. I played video games when I was a kid. I have a soft spot for videos. I love video games. You get stuff when you're, when you're a child. I love Superman. I grew up on Superman comic books. I, Superman is my absolute favorite. I love comic books. I love Star Wars. I love all that stuff. But I grew up with it. The same thing goes with music. Think about this. No matter how old you are, I, almost, I can almost guarantee you that regardless what age you are, whether you're 15 or you're 80, 
The music you regularly like to listen to is probably the stuff you grew up with, isn't it? Why do we all seem to think that the stuff from our childhood is the greatest? Well, I'm going to tell you, this is exactly why you market towards kids. Because kids grow up with stuff. It becomes a regular, familiar part of their life. They feel comfortable with it. They trust it. They like it. It's enjoyable for them. And then by the time they hit adulthood, they're already hooked. It's already a regular part of their life. You know how hard it was for me to quit drinking pop or energy drinks when as a, as a teenager and early 20s, that's all I drank? It's when you grow up with something, you don't want to let it go. You're so used to it. It becomes a part of your life. You like it at that point. So the strategy from, from a business standpoint is, well, let's market towards the kids. They can't buy anything right now on their own. They have to get their parents to do it. But... As we keep making them feel more comfortable with our business, by the time they're old enough to drive themselves and pay for themselves and, and, and choose freely for themselves what they do, they're already going to be hooked. They're going to love us. They're going to come to us before they even look somewhere else. And that's how they get you. And so many people don't know this. I didn't know this until I was like 30, I don't know, five, six, seven years ago, 30, whatever. I was 30 whatever years old when I learned that. And that's the thing is you don't know that as a kid. You don't even think about that kind of stuff as a kid. But this is how they indoctrinate people. Think about this right now. The things that are going on in school, the things you learn about in school form your beliefs as a young person. When we learn about dinosaurs when we're three years old, by the time you're in high school, you don't even think about evolution and dinosaurs and stuff because you were taught it at a young age. So you don't even look for potential flaws, potential problems. You don't even try to challenge any beliefs or ideas or theories when, that you learned when you were a kid. You're assuming that whatever you learned as a kid, that whoever taught you, that they know what they're talking about. And so we just listen and we just go with it. And we need to get to the point where we stop just listening to people and we start asking questions, we start fighting back, we start thinking for ourselves. Just accept the fact that when you were young, it's not necessarily that you were told lies, but you certainly were indoctrinated with a set of beliefs. And they may be right, some of them may be right, some of them may be wrong. The point is, when you're young, you're taught so much and you absorb so much that when you get older, this is like the foundation of who you are. It's the foundation of what you th how you think and what you consider yourself as. And luckily for me, I had parents that made me believe in myself, that made me think, but like mental toughness is the most underrated, under-talked about thing that is extraordinarily important in every person's life. When you can harness mental toughness and not let adversity and negativity destroy you or defeat you, you have a power that 99% of people will never understand. And it's just the truth. When you can be mentally tough enough to take on insults and negativity and constant attacks, constant belittling, constant uh, everything that you believe in, you got people talking against it or, or telling you that you're wrong or you're stupid. Uh, when you can face problems and rise to the occasion, that is a gift that most people will never have. They will never understand that. But it's not something that you either have or you don't. You can certainly be taught it. Because I don't think for a second that when I was 5 to 10 years old, I had any form of mental toughness. However, once I started getting towards being a teenager, then I started hearing about it all the time. I started hearing the importance of it. My dad taught me ways that made you tough. My mom, I remember the way she would deal with people in public. If, if she thought she was getting screwed over by anybody, she would, you, you, that person was not winning. I'll tell you that. My mom played no games. And same with my dad, but my dad did it in a little bit different way. My dad always came from more of a calm, more, um, a, a calmer, more uh, positive, happy approach, I guess. Or, um, it, But I mean, he would, he could get pissed. He would get mad and he would handle business, but it took a lot more to get him to that point. My mom didn't play any games. If you try, if she thought you were potentially going to attempt to screw her over. Oh, she would shut that down right away. 
I'll never forget being in the mall at uh, Mrs. Fields Cookies. I think I may have told this story before, but we're going to tell it again because that's what kind of day it is. <laughs> when I was at Mrs. Fields, I don't even remember what on earth it had anything to do with, but I just remember my mom wasn't having it. The person behind the counter either screwed something up or did something wrong or said something wrong. And my mom wasn't just going to sit there and take it. She let them have it. She got, she got done what needed to get done. And that was the end of it. And I, I learned, I remember learning from my dad, the wisdom of understanding when somebody is lying to you and whether or not you should speak up or not and let, or whether or not you should let them feel like they, like if, if somebody's lying to you, sometimes it's good to let them believe that you have fallen for it. And sometimes it's good to call them out. And when somebody is screwing it, like it's, it's wild because my dad taught me how to be mentally tough when people are attempting to screw you over and how to rise above it. And my mom taught me not to let anybody get away with it. If you have the ability, I look at it the same way as uncle Ben told Peter Parker in the Spider-Man movie with great power comes great responsibility. If you have the ability, if you are brave enough, courageous enough, and witty enough, or smart enough, or wise enough, or knowledgeable enough, or how logical enough, however you want to look at it, if you have the ability to take down somebody that is doing evil to yourself or others, you need to be the one to fight back and deal with the repercussions. Because there's not, there's so many people in the world that will not do it. There's so many people in the world who will take it over and over and over. Look at what's going on with the vaccine right now. Uh, this, and I don't care whether you get the vaccine or you don't. I don't care. This is not what that's about. But so many people are being told you must take the vaccine or else you will lose X, Y, and Z freedoms. You will not be able to work. You will not be able to go do this. You will not be able to do this. And so many people are just like, man, I better just get the vaccine then. And it's like, no, 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 that's not how you fight for your freedom. If you want to get the vaccine, go ahead. I'm not just trying to discourage anyone from getting it. But if you don't want to get the vaccine, don't let anyone push you into it or prod you into a direction you don't want to go. The way I look at it is whatever you want to do, whatever you decide to do, whatever you decide is best for you, never let somebody else persuade you into doing anything that you don't, you don't want to do just because you think it might make things easier or more comfortable. We ain't here to be extra comfortable. All right. When you have the ability to fight for freedom, when you have the ability to stand up for freedom and you're brave enough or courageous enough to do it, don't back down. Stand up because there's not enough people that will. And if you're one of them, we desperately need you. And that's all the time I got today, guys. That's all. I just wanted to make that message very clear. If you find it within yourself to be brave, courageous, if you feel the ability, the mental toughness, the wisdom to be able to fight against negative nonsense that is being pushed onto everybody, so many people will just bend over and take it. You know, they'll, they'll do whatever they got to do just to make things easier and more comfortable. But some of us stand up for what we believe is very, is, is necessary and those are the, we need you. We need as many as possible. There's not enough of them anymore. So guys, with that, I'm going to let you go. And I thank you so much for being here and listening on my birthday. It means so much to me. I couldn't ask for a better birthday present, to be honest with you. I love you guys so much. And I thank you each and every time, every one of you that listens. If Please like, subscribe, find me on any social media platform. DM me, message me, whatever you want to do. Ask me anything you want to ask, talk, or even just chat. Just give me a holler. I love you guys so much, and I thank you so much. I'll talk to you soon. Be blessed. Peace. I'm out of here.